Hey, this is Mitch Canton with Salmon Creek Live again, and we have been transported back in time at the Philida Fourth of July Festival. And I don't know if we're with uh, Lewis or Clark. Who are we with today? You're with George Duyar. I was the sign talker. There you are. And the hunter. The hunter. For huh? the Lewis and Clark expedition. And there is my beaver trap and uh, many of my furs that I have killed, of course. Very impressive take. So uh, what brings you to Philida? What brings me to Philida? It just looked like a place where we might get some good food. We have been eating dog meat coming down the Columbia River, and I hope that we can find something good to eat or some friendly natives. And I, I've been noticing there's a lot of friendly natives here, and I have that, that smell of good food. And I think shortly I'm going to venture because they may be having something on a spit, eh? <laughs> that we can eat. Tell but, me a little uh, bit about your presentation here today. It was phenomenal. I was very impressed with everything you did. Who, who am I speaking with? And tell me about your presentation. First, first many thanks. I am George Uyar, and this is kind of a campment to show a lot of items the expedition would have had. Uh, you've got cooking utensils. They had copper kettles, and uh, we had trade beads, mostly red. We had very few blue, and those were the most popular with the Chinook people at the mouth of the Columbia. Uh, we've got uh, beaver pelts. We've got the American flag of the time, which has 15 stars and 15 stripes. It wasn't until the return of the expedition when we found out there were 17 states, they changed the flag, and we had 17 stars and 13 stripes. So I have two encampments. This one actually shows some things we were eating. This was something the native peoples in the lower Columbia had much of, and we traded for Wapato. It grows still along the Columbia. It's very edible. It grows in swamps and when harvested by Indian native women with their feet, and it would float to the top. And then over here, I have preparing some beaver soup. I have beaver tail and a beaver skull. And these are great for young people to look at. And I tell them too, make sure you use your eye penna because otherwise your teeth will be orange like these. I didn't see beaver on the menu over there at the uh, Lions Club. Yes, but, uh... And then this is just another side and this shows the beaver pelt early on after you would trap the beaver using a beaver trap and you would skin it. You would put it on a willow branch like this, stretch it and get all of the meat off and then take the brains of the animal, rub it into the hide, roll it up for a poor period of time, and then you could start the process of tanning and make them real soft and pliable. I have a horn there from a bighorn sheep. It's a horn that I use to blow occasionally, just for the kids. This is a lead canister. Captain Lewis had described these. There was 52 of these on the expedition. And there was just exactly enough powder in each of these containers, lead containers. There was four pounds of powder and eight pounds of lead. And if you shot all the powder inside and melted this, it was exactly the amount of lead balls that the powder inside here would shoot. And so it was cal calculated that way. But we got back to St. Louis and we had half of it still left over. So these are many things here, buffalo skull and horns. There's a badger over there and a bobcat. Trade blankets. Here's one of those Hudson Bay trade blankets with the price tag right on it. Three and a half beaver pelts would buy that. It's a lot of fun though being here and educating children and meeting with the families. So that's what I do. I tell stories and uh, portray a character. Do you travel around the country to do this? I do. And I also belong to two groups of reenactors. One's the Discovery Expedition of St. Charles, Missouri, who actually followed the route during the bicentennial. And I was with them off and on. I had other life, so I wasn't with them every day, but some people were for the entire time from uh, 2003 to 2006. I was at the beginning on May 14th in St. Charles, and I returned to St. Louis on the 23rd of March of 2006. I was with them when we arrived and departed from Fort Clatsop in 2005 and 2006 as part of the Discovery Expedition reenactment. 
We right, right now there's uh, about 20 of us that uh, have a group down at Fort Clatsop area uh, they called the Pacific Northwest Living Historians. And uh, we do reenactments down on the Pacific Coast. The Salt Works in August on Seaside Beach. Next month, or this month, about the middle of the month, we'll be at Cape Disappointment at Clark's Camp. And then uh, a little while ago, we were at the Dismal Niche, about the north side of the Astoria Megler Bridge, on Memorial Day, which we do every year. And then there are the other things, and I'm constantly doing boat tours, bus tours, and presentations uh, around the Pacific Northwest. These are not fake props. These are incredible things out here. For example, uh, these beads that you have on, they're not just thrown together for Mardi Gras last year, are they? No, these are these are authentic trade beads. They're a ceramic. You've got the red and the blue, which were most popular. And why? Because these came on trade ships only and couldn't be traded from inland. So when trade ships came with these blue beads from Africa and the Far East, they were very heavily valued. And these, which are Russian cobalt blue glass beads. These but, were the main trade items. But those are a couple hundred years old, yes, right? Yes. Yeah, they're original stuff. That's awesome. You, you do an incredible presentation. We're fortunate to have you here in Florida for the uh, 4th of July Festival. We hope to uh, be able to see you again sometime. Thank you so I much for so your too. time. Thank you. This is Mitch Canton with SalmonCreekLive.com. Thanks a lot. Hi, you. Mossy. Many thanks from the Chinook people.